Now, this was the theorem that we talked about last time and then in the review at the beginning of this hour, that if you have a network flow, the maximum value of flow is equal to the minimum capacity of a cut. So conceivably, you could test all the cuts and simply calculate the capacity of each and take the minimum. But there are two to the n minus two cuts. The, it's what's in L and what's in R. If you put all the vertices in L, I mean, whatever vertices you put in L, the remaining ones are in R. So how many different ways are there to choose the subset L? Well, it's got to have something in it, so it's got to be non-empty, but it can't be everything. So there's two to the n subsets, but two of them are illegal. So there's two to the n minus two. And when n is 1,000, or 10,000, or 100,000, you're, you're simply not going to do two to the 100,000 minus two things. It doesn't matter how fast you can do them. But as I comment on the bottom of this slide, there's an efficient algorithm which finds a maximum flow and a minimum cut at the same time. And that's what we're going to learn today. And the emphasis will be that it's all about augmenting paths. All right. So let's take an augmenting path discovered like this. So we let L be the set of all vertices X, where X now is a capital letter only because I'm, I'm using capital letters to denote vertices. Let L be the set of all vertices capital X for which there's an augmenting path from S to X. So you see, you should think of augmenting as like, do I have the capability of getting any extra flow from the source to this guy? By having a path which is a partial path, it goes from here to here, and it goes sometimes forward, sometimes backwards, sometimes forward, sometimes backwards, sometimes forward. But all the forward edges are not full, and all the backwards edges are not empty. So by either adding or subtracting, I can get a little bit of more material from the source to here. Now, my goal is to get it over there to the sink. But at least I can get it to here. So you, you let L will be the ones that you can reach with an augmenting path, a sort of a partial augmenting path. And you let R be the ones you can't reach. Now, look at the edges which go from the ones you can reach to the ones you can't. So if you have an edge that goes from L to R, it must be full. Because if it wasn't full and you can get something to the first endpoint, then it's not full, so you can push a little bit across. So you can get something over here. Now, conversely, if you have an edge, if you can reach this stuff, and here's a vertex, and there's an edge backwards, but you can't reach this one, then what do you know about this edge? It's empty. Because if it wasn't empty and you got some stuff here, you take some of it away and push it over here. So all the forward edges are full, and all the backwards edges are empty. When you have searched for augmenting paths, and you can reach some of the vertices and not others. OK, now. If you simply look at the high school algebra about flows, when you have a cut and all the edges from L to R are full and all the edges that go backwards from R to L is empty, then the value of the current flow is equal to the capacity of this cut. And you're done. Right, so now what that means is, all you're going to do is find augmenting paths and increase the value of the flow and keep that up iteratively until you can't find any augmenting paths. When you can't find any augmenting paths, there's a set of vertices that you can reach 
And there's a set of vertices that you can't reach. The set of vertices that you can reach always includes the source. The set of vertices that you can't reach always includes the sink, and you are done. 